that ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, the writings and the utterances of Jesus. I'm talking about the, just in case you have a red letter Bible, the utterances of Jesus have been read. You need to go back and study the items in red. Because there was a rich, a rich, rich unveiling of spiritual reality and spiritual uh, knowledge that was communicated through the ministry of Jesus. Several things we never had known except Jesus decided to speak on those matters. Now, the first thing is, uh, hallelujah. First thing, it says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And it's quite fascinating that this, this procedure begins on earth. This procedure doesn't begin in heaven, it begins on earth. And that is to say that if the earth decides to become serious, things will move. But if the earth lies in complacency, the heavens might be handicapped in administering the bounties of redemption. Hallelujah. If you shall bind on whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he now spoke about the possibility of agreement. Agreement. If two of you shall agree as touching anything. Now, first thing I'd like you to take note of. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus did not only reveal the possibilities that are bound to us in corporate spiritual engagement. Jesus revealed the principle that made those possibilities available. So, now if you, if you were a student of physics, for instance, and you have a good physics teacher, the physics teacher is supposed to reveal the principle uh, that backs a particular subject before it delves into the subject. Like if you, you travel, if you do air travels, you do air travels quite frequently, you find a few things. Like uh, a pilot that decides to go high 38,000 meters above sea level he will he will land at airport destination airport faster than the guy that goes 33,000 meters above sea level just in case they maintain the same speed because he has exploited the principle of projectile right now you see jesus did not only teach truth he taught principles that support truth and jesus said are you with me? He unveiled two possibilities. The possibility of binding and losing and the possibility of agreement in spiritual matters. Then, in verse 20, he now revealed the principle that all these two possibilities are based upon. Now, so if we are going to understand this, these possibilities, we must first start by accessing the principles that create their possibility in the first place and when we fully understand that we can now begin to talk on the possibilities that the principles provide are you with me like the guy that goes 38,000 meters above sea level is applying a principle you see this guy is going 33,000 
meters above sea level. He's somewhere here. Right? This guy goes here. You see, if this guy is going to be landing, you see, this guy has a thrust. As he's coming from this height, he, does, he even uses less fuel because the law of gravity is aiding him in, in his adventure. He's taking advantage of existent principles. So we need to know uh, these issues from principle level, from concept level, first of all, before we can be proficient in the application of the possibilities that they provide. I found out over time that the body of Christ was never taught, never, never, in Nigeria, never, taught basic principles in prayer. Even though we know how to run businesses, you know, in church we know how to run businesses, we know how to Hallelujah. We understand customer care principles and protocols. Yeah, customer care principles. Customer care. Crowd control. Crowd management. Blending colors. And then we come to church looking so nice. That's not the concept. The word ecclesia has nothing to do with how you look. It's a government terminology. The ecclesia. Hallelujah. <laughs> it has two meanings. You see, and meanwhile, it's not just any kind of government we're talking about. The, the, the word ecclesia is with particular reference to the Roman style of government. Jesus used that word where the world power at that time was the Romans. So he used it. Everybody that that was under Roman rule will understand what ecclesia meant at that time. Are you with me? All right. So if we get, when Rome conquers a new territory, you know, those days in warfare, even the communal clashes that we had, uh, if you conquer a territory, you get all of them, bring them back home, make them slaves. That's not how the Romans do it. Because Rome itself wasn't a big province. So if you keep bringing everybody home, there'll be no space, no land, no, nothing to support that kind of existence. So what the Romans did was that if they conquer your colony and you submit to their government, they appoint people from the pool of senators. Are you with me? You realize in order for you to become a senator, uh, you are a representative, you have a constituency. You are standing there as a corporate persona, not as a person, but you are standing there as a people. So everything you are speaking about is, is consistent with constituency. Now, so they come to the pool of senators because democracy was practiced and entrenched first by the Romans. So we, everybody has a voice. And because you are the leader of your constituency, you are, you, have, you are a corporate persona. You know, um, this guy, Nicodemus, came to Jesus in the night and said, we, we know that you are a teacher come from God. It was only one man that came to Jesus, but he said, we, we. Because he was speaking as a corporate persona. He had a constituency. I say with me. Now, so in this constituency... They now select and say, okay, Pastor Daniel, Emmanuel, all right, Michael Rockwell. Because they need, they understood government, they know that government is basically in three arms. All right, the judiciary, that's pilot, executive, herald. And then in those days, The military was important. So the, these were the three basic arms. Everybody that made it up to Senate level in the Roman Empire must have been a centurion. That means you, you were a soldier at some point to defend the territory. That's what gave you the right to be able to speak for the, for the territory. So they pick three out of those people. Make one the governor. Make another one the defender of the law. Roman law. And then make another one the head of the military. And their mission 
These three people that they take out of this pool of people are called out from the pool of senators to these three guys at the ecclesia. And the assignment is to go to this new conquered territory, decauterize it, make it Roman. First of all, they, they start by changing everybody's name. Your name is the name you bore before. Because you are a Roman at heart. That's what they believe, that the world is Rome. So they change your name and give you something like Spartacus. That telumun that you have been bearing will not pass with the Ecclesia of Rome. <laughs> change your name, force you to speak Latin, you even forget. Your children will not know you are a Tibman. Are you with me? The Ecclesia. Just three men create that effect in a territory. They, they, they force them to submit to Roman justice system. Very soon you begin to think like a Roman. And you forget where you came from. And only three men were set up to create that ripple effect among the people. Break civilization and burn civilization and make you Roman. Now, when you look at Nigeria, how much of deculturizing have we been able to achieve? Can you see all the fault lines in our political system? It means that the ecclesia has not been trained to dispatch her duty. One of the significant powers available to the ecclesia is our, our ability to operate as a corporate persona. You know, when Peter was in prison, the Bible says that prayers were made by the church without ceasing. You see, it was not one believer praying. It was a church-based exercise. Now, do you realize what will happen if for the next 55 days, we shut down all the branches of what we call church in Makodi. Just shut down. No NKS, no Equa, no Redeem. And then uh, we break ourselves into five groups. One group can be visiting IBB Square. Another one, Stadium. And we pray from morning till 4 p.m. Morning till 4 p.m. For 65 days, people will die. <laughs> That is when you will know that the scope from whence we do business is superior to any structure that is built in the physical that seeks to threaten our possibilities. But you know that can happen. With the structures we have today, you know it, it's not possible. <laughs> okay, okay. It takes, it, takes, it takes only God for that to happen. Now listen. Even God himself knows that it's not likely to happen. God. Because from the book, stay with me. Stay with me. From the book of Revelation, given that God is aware that the likelihood of that, because, you see, the people praying for, the, for Peter to be released, what is a church, it was a church movement. Prayers were made without ceasing by the church. It was the ecclesia that carried out that exercise. The ecclesia in a particular territory that was their business. High cherubs of glory that have not come into the regions of the earth before. There are some angels if they come here, River Bene will dry up. The prayer ascended to heaven enough for God to be justified to unleash those kind of spirits. Do you remember the fate of the great gate of the city? When they were coming out of prison, that gate opened of its own accord. And meanwhile, that was the, that was, um, that was the territory of the great 
the great princes of the earth. 